All right, so this is my refined blocking sketch with Day of the Dead working within my format with a modified typeface of the not postman typeface. I want to make sure that I like that more than some of these other options. And I can change these other options to multiply as well. And that just looks a little, I don't know, too friendly, I guess. And then this one, I like the, the texture, but maybe that's something I can add. Set it to multiply mode. And that one I like, but maybe it's a little too zombie, zombie movie-ish. So I think I can learn from both of these. I like the thickness of these letter forms and the textural variation. And I like the movement and kind of hand-drawn nature of these, especially with the exclamation mark. And I like how the, the bottoms kind of finish out rough. It's not quite like bloody letters, but it has, has an energy to it that I like. So I'm going to continue to modify, not in Photoshop anymore, but in Illustrator. So to do that, let me save my work here. I don't need to post it anywhere. This is just a process document. And then I'm going to close every background except white. So it's just my type on the white background. That's why you'll see in the assignment. There we go. That students often just post their, their black type without any image, right? Because we're going to modify this as a vector on its own. And I know that this spacing is what I want, but if I'm not so confident, I can select it with just day of the for one vector and then dead for another vector. And that gives me v more versatility. And maybe I'll do that. So how would I do that? Well, I'll turn off that one and then save this as a copy. And I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. into, let me actually open these up, my assignment six folder. So I know where to find it. Okay, and then I'm going to add dead, turn off the rest, file, save as a copy to the same place. And I'll usually call these test files because they're not vectors yet, but they're going to be used to make vectors and as a JPEG. Okay, I've already, I already saved this before I isolated it, so I'm going to close that now and not save. I have it there if I need it. If I want to be careful, I can always save it onto my cloud as well. So let's see. Save to cloud documents. Here it is. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to leave Photoshop for a bit. Minimize it. I'm going to find that file. You can see how many process files there are when you're working on such projects. I'll use that stuff later, but I'm going to go into assignment six. It's all about organization. One of them made it there, and I'm going to open that with Illustrator. So show you again how that looks. You turn off everything except your type and your white background. And you save it as a test file that is a JPEG.
So I'm going to save a copy. as a JPEG and I'm going to put it into my assignment six folder. There we go. Just didn't go deep enough last time. Get out of Photoshop and now I'm opening these up in Illustrator, both of them. Open with these test files with Illustrator. I have them in two separate files. Doesn't matter how they appear on, on the artboard. All I have to do is use the large selection tool and click on them because they're raster files and then go to properties. And it's going to give me the option to image trace. I want a black and white logo just like we've done before. But then I need the advanced options because I need to click in on advanced and say ignore the white. I just want black shapes. So I'm going to put them both in that same setting. Image trace, black and white logo under the advanced options, which you can get to with this little icon here. Click on the arrow for the drop down for advanced. This is very important and say ignore white. And now I want these to look dirty. I want these to look uh, more zombie-ish, right? So I'm going to allow for more noise. I'm going to want them to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to make their threshold more. And I'm going to, I don't know if I want to increase paths or not. I want them to stay pretty readable. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So when I'm happy with it, then I click expand. And it saves it as a vector. You see all those anchor points. Right. Same thing here. I can move it down onto the white to see it a little bit more clearly. I want more noise. I want more thickness to increase the threshold. I can try more paths. Yeah, that gives it a little bit more grainy feel. But I don't think I want as much as it's showing right now. Yeah, because it can get kind of wavy and, and look lower quality. That's about right. Okay. Expand. So now I've got two vectors. I go to my layers and I'm going to show you how I can distress these as vectors. Instead of having to color them with texture and emboss, I'm going to show you how I can add um, texture to them as a vector. All right, so we are live tracing our type from Photoshop, and now we have individual vectors that can be modified. Now, I wanted to thicken some of them up, right? Especially the H, maybe the D, maybe the A. This is so easy to do now that they're vectors. All I need is my small selection tool and my handy dandy pencil tool. And I'm gonna set my pencil to not be smooth, rather to be more accurate than smooth because this is a, a wavier, kind of weirder hand done type. And then how do I use that magic pencil tool to thicken it up? Well, I don't want to thicken the outside of the A because I like that kerning. So instead, I'm going to redraw this inside of it so that that shape's thicker and has that same kind of quality, hand-done quality. Same thing here. Make the tail a little bit longer. Maybe that's too wavy. So I could Command Z. And I pretty much just try to match the type design as is, but thicken it out a little bit. Same thing with the D. 
And by doing this, we really are creating custom type. It's definitely influenced by a modification of a typeface we found. But we have full ability. We can add serifs if we want, like tails on them, embellishments. And you can really start to see how type designers work. Because type designers, typographers, when they work digitally, they basically use specialized vector software where you just code individual letter forms like this to the keyboard. That's all it is. Type, typography design, typeface design is synonymous with vector design because that's what type is. So I'm influenced by it, but I might be modifying it a lot, right? depending on what I want. Let's thicken it up a little bit here. I like pretty bold typefaces, display typefaces that don't have a lot of, of energy where I don't want the viewer looking. I might round this off a bit and thicken it up here. And there are such things as color typefaces now. Photoshop can support color typefaces, but it doesn't really make sense because you can just use layer styles to add the coloring effects after the fact. So I really like the shape of this F, but I don't like how generic looking the stems are. So I'm going to modify those. It doesn't take much. I'm going to do a little split in the T. Give it a little bit thicker top. Make it look a little bit more distressed. Remember, I've turned my smoothing off for my pencil tool so that it has a little bit more variation to it than it usually would, like if I'm doing a logo. And then this H, I wanted to add thickness here and maybe a serif. Make sure it's still readable. Now, until Illustrator could be used for this purpose, I was not a big fan of typography as something that I liked designing. I took a class in it. It was required for my illustration degree. And we had to do all the type, type uh, design by hand with graphic black paint on white poster board that we then took to a, to a print house to photostat basically to get a clean black image. But once you bring it into a program like Illustrator, not only is it perfectly clean, it's infinitely scalable, which is fantastic. So having done it the traditional way, the way they did before computers, I got to say I deeply prefer this method. OK, so I have day of the. Now I'm going to save that. I'm not even going to save it as an AI file. I'm going to save it only as an EPS, right? So I'm going to save it to my computer, change the format to an EPS file. And I'm going to call this assignment six type design. But this is specific type for my poster. This is day of the as an EPS. Make sure I know where it's saved to that I can find it. There it is. Mark it as purple. OK, now with dead, same thing. I just want to thicken the D. The stem there on both of them. 
Oops. Remember to use the pencil tool, my favorite tool.